Hello, my name is Eve. I'm a 3D artist and illustrator, and today I'll be showing you how to easily rig your characters in Blender using Rigify. This is part two of my tutorial on Rigify, and in this part I'll show you how to do weight painting. In part one I showed you how to set up and generate the rig, so if you haven't checked out part one, make sure you do. Okay, let's jump into it. First I'll give a quick summary of what weight painting is and how it works for those of you who are beginners. Feel free to skip this part if you aren't a beginner. Weight painting is an essential part of the rigging process. Once you attach or skin your model to your joints, your skeleton can now move your mesh. Skin weights are what define how your mesh moves and how much influence the individual bones have over certain areas. Adjusting your skin weights by weight painting allows you to determine how much of an effect each bone has on a set of vertices when you move that bone. So to simplify all that, through weight painting you assign parts of the mesh to the bones. For example, if we paint this area here red, this bone can now influence the red area, and when you move the bone, the area we painted moves with it. You can tell how much influence a bone has over the mesh by the color. Red means the bone has 100% influence over that area, yellow means 80%, green means 50%, and dark blue means no influence over the area at all. How strong the influence is depends on the intensity of your brush. If you set it to 1 and paint like this, the area will turn red. So once you move this bone, 100% of these vertices will move with the bone. If you reduce the strength to 0.5, when you paint, the area will turn green, which means the bone only has 50% influence over these vertices here, so they won't fully move into position with the bone. When skinning your mesh, you typically start with a bind with automatic weights. The automatic weights are a rough approximation by Blender, and they're a good starting point. Automatic weights work by finding vertices closest to the joints and assigning influence based on distance. However, sometimes Blender doesn't do the best job at that, so we have to go in manually and adjust the influences. Before we start, here are some quick useful shortcuts for weight painting. To go into weight paint mode, press tab and choose weight paint. You can press N to bring out the side menu on top here, and then as you can see your brush settings are in the tool menu. You can use Shift and F to change the intensity of your brush. Ok, let's start adjusting the skin weights on our model now. When you rotate the control for the head on this model here by pressing R, you can see that the whiskers have some issues with the weights. They aren't following the head exactly. At the moment, some of the arm bones also have influence over the whiskers, which we don't want. So that is an issue with the automatic weights that Blender did. This happens because Blender's automatic skin weights decided that the whiskers are close enough to the arm bone, so it automatically assigned some of the vertices to the arm bone. But we can fix that easily enough. How we want to do it is to have the head bone have 100% influence over the whiskers, so they only move with the head bone. Let's do that now. First you want to check what the name of the head bone is. Press tab and go into edit mode and then click on the head bone. As you can see here, the name of the head bone is spine006. Now when you press tab and go back into object mode, select the whiskers. In object data properties, here on the right, you want to find spine006. This is the bone that we want to assign all the weights to. As you can see here, there are a lot of bones on the list that also have influence over the whiskers. We will remove those later, but first let's assign 100% of the influence to spine006. With spine006 selected, press tab and then select weight paint. Then press N to bring up the item menu, and then here in the top right go into Tool. Here you can determine the strength of your weight painting brush as well as the fall off. With Spine006 selected and a brush strength of 1, let's paint the whiskers completely red. A useful trick here in advanced settings is to turn off front faces only, so now you can paint on both the front and the back sides of the mesh at the same time. Now let's paint everything in red. Ok, all done. When you rotate the head now, the whiskers move a bit better. However, there's still some bone influences on there which we need to remove. But we'll do that later on. First, let's paint all the correct weights for the other parts of the body, and then we'll remove the influences that we don't want. Let's fix the bottom of the dress now. 
When I move the hip controller here, you can see that the dress bends a bit weird on the back. I want it to stay straight and not bend with the squat. To do that, I find the name of the hip bone by pressing tab and going into edit mode. I select the bone here and as you can see here, it's called spine 001. So that is the bone we want to assign our influence to. Let's go into weight paint mode now. Press tab and select weight paint. Find the bone you want to assign the influence to, in this case spine 001, and with the brush start painting the area you want to be affected. Here I'm painting the bottom of the dress because I don't want it to be deforming when the legs move. I'm painting this whole bottom area red to assign it to spine 001 and then slightly blending it up by decreasing the brush strength. Okay, with all of those areas assigned to spine 001, let's test how the deformations are looking. Here I'm going into pose mode and testing the hip controller. As you can see, the back is still deforming weirdly. That is because the other bones still have influence over the bottom area of the dress. To fix that, we will have to remove those influences. I will now show you two ways to do that. We'll remove the unwanted weights on the bottom of the dress one way and then the unwanted weights on the whiskers a different way. What way you use depends on if you'll need those bone influences later on and if not you can just completely remove them. Let's do the dress first. Press tab and go into weight paint mode. Let's find the bones that are creating the issue now. Here on the list, we want to select through all the influences and find the ones that are creating the deformation issues at the bottom of the dress. In this case, it is both pelvis bones as well as the thigh bones. You can see that by the green color, which means there is influence of those bones over this area. We want to remove those influences now. One way to do that is to select the bones you don't want to have influence over this area and here from tool settings, change the blend from mix to subtract. What that does is now you can remove influences with your brush. With the left thigh bone selected and the brush strength set to 1, I now remove the influence over this part of the model. I'm just painting over it and as you can see here it's just straightening up a bit. Then I select the other thigh bone and both pelvis bones and do the exact same. I'm just painting over it in subtract mode. You want the area to turn dark blue and what that means is that the bones have no influence over that area of the mesh. Now with all of those removed you can see that the bottom of the dress doesn't deform weirdly. It moves only with the hips and remains nice and uniform. It doesn't stretch in any unusual places which is very good. <laughs> okay so the second area we want to fix is the whiskers. As you can see here, when we move the arm around, it still has influence over the whiskers and we do not want that. Here I'm going to show you another way to remove influences completely. In this case, we're sure that we don't want any other bones apart from the head bone to have influence over the whiskers. So what we can do is to completely remove the unwanted bones as influence. Select the whiskers press tab and go into weight paint mode. You can see here on the list of the right how many bones have influence over the whiskers. We don't need all of those so we can just remove them. To remove them you can select the bone and then press on this little minus sign here to remove the influence. That removes the influence of the bone completely. I remove all of the bones up to spine 006 and then we want to keep the rest. When you move the head now, you can see the whiskers move properly. And now when you move the arm, the whiskers aren't affected. So they're all fixed now too. And now the final thing we want to fix is the little bag on the waist. It also isn't following the body correctly because of the automatic weights just not doing a very good job. To fix that, select the bag, press tab and go into weight paint mode. I've found the bone that is nearest to the bag and in this case that is spine 002. Remember to change your brush back to mix and then you can paint the whole bag red in order to assign it to spine 002. I do the exact same for the little clasps on the bag. 
Now we're going to kind of combine the two methods I showed you and in addition to painting the bag weights, we'll also remove any unwanted influences completely. Here from the list on the right, we want to select all the bones apart from the spine and remove them from the minus sign. That ensures that only the spine has influence over the bag and no other bones stretch it in any weird ways. Okay, so the skin weights are all fixed now. We can test the other controls and see if anything else needs adjusting. Here, to bend the fingers, you can press S to scale them open and close. They seem to be deforming well, so no other weight adjustments are needed. When you're done with testing everything, to clear the pose, you can press F3 and then type in Pose Clear and then choose Pose Clear Transform All. That quickly resets your controls to the default bind pose and clears any rotations and translations that you've done. Finally, I just quickly want to show you how you can adjust your rig and its visibility while you're animating. When you press tab and go into pose mode, here in the item menu you can change some things. I like to turn off stretch on my leg and arm IKs. I do that by scrolling down here and setting IK stretch to zero. Now when you push and pull the hand around, it won't stretch the whole arm. You can set that value to something lower if you want a little bit of stretch. I turn mine off completely just because that's how I prefer it. Another thing you can control from the item menu is the visibility of the controls and skeleton. If you press on any item under rig layers, you can disable its visibility. This is very very useful if you want to hide certain areas while animating so it doesn't get too busy. Afterwards you can always turn them back on. And that is it for this Rigify tutorial. I hope you found it useful and learned something new. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe and leave a little comment below so we can feed the algorithm gods. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to help. Also, the bunny model I used in this video is something I made for my mini tutorial series on modeling in Blender. So if you're interested in how to make it, make sure to check out the other tutorials on my channel. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!